So this video is about dilutions. I've drawn a picture here. A, a picture of juice is in the fridge and you take that out of the fridge and decide to pour yourself a glass. But when you look at it, you think, oh boy, that's going to be too sweet for me. So what do you do? Correct. You pour a small volume of that solution into your glass and then you add water. So let's say the portion that fits there was like this section, which had, it looks like three dots in it of solute. Okay, and then you add water. Right, so as you add water, you fill the glass up. So what happens when you stir that or as you actually just pour it together, you find that in that full volume, you have those three dots of solute spread out amongst the entire volume. Okay, so this is the idea of dilution. We have a certain concentration, a certain concentration of a concentrated solution. And in chemistry, we call the concentrated solution the stock solution, the one that we're going to dilute. So we've used a particular volume of that concentrated solution and it has a certain concentration in moles per liter. And after adding water, we now have a larger volume of a diluted solution. So the D standing for dilute solution, which yes, there'll also be a concentration associated with that diluted solution. So which is greater, VC, or VD. VC being the volume of the concentrated solution that we initially put in the glass. So right here, this volume. Or VD, the volume of the new prepared diluted solution. <clears throat> so hopefully you're seeing here that the volume of the diluted solution is greater than the volume of the concentrated solution. Definitely we've used a smaller volume of the stock solution added water and now we have a larger volume. Okay, how about concentration? How does the concentration of the concentrated solution, so the concentration of this solution, compare to the concentration of the diluted solution? So we have three dots in this volume, right, compared to three dots in this larger volume. So what's happened to the concentration of the diluted solution? Well, hopefully you're thinking that the concentration of the concentrated solution is greater <clears throat> than the concentration of a dilute solution. It certainly should be. We have the same number of moles, right, just in a larger volume, and that will make this concentration lower. When the denominator is larger, the value of the quotient becomes lower. Okay, so if the volumes and the concentrations of these two solutions are different, what is actually the same? What variable is the same when you look at this volume of the stock solution and this volume of the new diluted solution? What is actually equal between these two? It's not the volume and it's not the concentration. <clears throat> so hopefully you recognize there that it's actually the number of particles or as we group them, moles of solute. Here we had three dots on, on, in the concentrated solution and there's the same three dots of solute spread throughout the <clears throat> diluted solution. Okay, so using the relationship that amount is concentration times volume, I'm going to replace each n here with C times V. So the concentration of the concentrated solution times the volume of the concentrated solution. And the same thing with the amount here of the diluted solution. So CD times VD. I'm going to suggest to you that this is the fundamental relationship that you can use to calculate <clears throat> calculate or answers involving dilutions. I highly recommend that you draw yourself this picture uh, or draw pictures as you solve these dilution problems labeling VC and CC, VD and CD to um, help yourself understand the question. Generally, you're going to be given three of these four variables and you'll need to solve for the fourth. 
Um, quite commonly, you'll be given CC and BC, the new diluted volume, and asked to find the concentration of the new solution. Um, and secondly, another type of question will be asking you for VC. What volume of a certain stock solution is required to prepare a certain concentration of, and a volume of a new diluted solution? So these would be quite common calculations done <clears throat> in a laboratory preparing solutions for experiments. So we'll get some practice actually physically doing this in class. Um, but for now, <clears throat> excuse me, a couple of examples. Um, for the dilution calculations. And I should remind you here that your algebraic skills are important. So just taking CCVC equals CDVD, and you'll occasionally see this formula written as C1V1 equals C2V2. I like to use the subscripts of C and D because they emphasize the meaning and understanding behind the process. Um, but if you want to use the ones and twos, that's okay. <clears throat> so be prepared to isolate different variables here. For example, VC. So if we're going to isolate VC, so here we'll divide by CC on both sides, <clears throat> and you'll see that it cancels, and so we finish with VC equaling CDVD over CC. <clears throat> Excuse me. And secondly, you'll have questions quite commonly where you're asked to isolate the concentration of a diluted solution. So perhaps we divide then on both sides by the volume <clears throat> of the diluted solution. And so we finish with CD equaling CCVC over VD. So these will be common formulas that you'll use in the various problems. So let's look at a couple of examples. Okay. So example one, you're being asked to find the volume of 12.0 mole per liter hydrochloric acid that is required to make 500.0 milliliters of 0.25 molar uh, HCl. So we, we know we have CC, VC, CD, and BD, and hopefully this sounds like a dilution to you. We're taking a volume of a certain solution and preparing a new volume of a, a lower concentration solution. So hopefully you look at these units of moles per liter and that makes you think of concentration. So in these two cases, we clearly have <clears throat> concentration. Now, which one is CC and which one is CD? Well, you can tell by the sheer magnitude of the numbers, 12.0 is larger than 0 0.25. So this is the more concentrated solution and this is the dilute one. But even when you read the question, Right? We use a volume of a concentrated solution in order to prepare a diluted solution. And so that can also make sense to you. So we're looking for the volume of this solution. So we're looking for the volume of the concentrated solution. And this will be the volume of the new diluted solution. <clears throat> so we can I identify our variables here. We're looking for VC given CC. Uh, VD and CD. Okay, just a comment about units. When you are manipulating any form of C equals N over V, N equals C times V, or V equals N over C, here, volume must be in liters. Volume is in liters for sure. But when you're manipulating anything with, to do with this dilution equation, you'll notice that, for example, in this case, if volume is in milliliters and this volume is in milliliters, both those milliliters would cancel, leaving us with the units of CC, which is moles per liter, and that would be correct for concentration. If we're using this form of the formula, both the moles per liter would cancel here, and whatever unit we had this volume in, if it was milliliters, that would then just be the unit for the second volume. So when working with any version of this dilution equation, the volumes do not need to be in liters as they do here. What's important is that they are the same unit. So if VC is in milliliters, so is VD. If VC is in liters, so is VD and vice versa. So that's the trick. So beware of that, you can save yourself some time. So I think of the original formula, CCVC equals CDVD, and do some rearrangement to isolate for VC. 
So BC equals CDBD over CC. So now you can go ahead and substitute the values and compute. So the volume of the dilute at 500.0, and we're dividing, oops, sorry about that. I realized I <clears throat> made a mistake there. The concentration of the diluted solution was 0 0.25 moles per liter. And the concentration of the concentrated one is in our denominator. So you'll see that the units here are moles per liter times milliliters over moles per liter. So those moles per liter will cancel. That just means our answer is in milliliters. Regarding sig figs, we have two sig figs here, four sig figs here, and three sig figs here. So we'll finish with two sig figs in the final answer. And so we finish with 10.4, which rounds to 10 milliliters. Now the way that, that I've written that, that zero now looks like a trailing zero. So 1.0 times 10 to the one milliliters would be um, the better way to report that because here we see two sig figs and that's what we need. Whereas when I read it like this, that trailing zero <clears throat> appears insignificant and so we'll use scientific notation to be clear. Okay, that's all there is to it. Identify your variables. Oops. Identify your variables and list list the given and required. Uh, I write the formula with the variable isolated, substitute, solve, round to the correct number of sig figs, and use your units. Okay, so try example two. Okay, so just to be clear, as you read this question, I'm drawing a little picture here. We're essentially putting 43.1 milliliters of a solution that has a concentration of 1.00 moles per liter into a flask. And then we're going to add water until the volume, the total volume, is 200 milliliters. So I mentioned drawing pictures to help yourself understand what's happening. The question here, the concentration of the new solution. So you can see that these, this information has to do with the concentrated solution <clears throat> and the new solution is the diluted one. The type of flask I've drawn is a volumetric flask and we'll be working with those. They're specific to solution preparation. Okay, so I've listed the variables and now I'll start with the formula with CD isolated. So CCVC over VD. Go ahead and substitute, solve, and finish off your answer. Okay, so just to be clear, we took moles per liter multiplied by milliliters divided by milliliters, so the milliliters cancel. <clears throat> that gives us fin final units of moles per liter. Now in terms of sig figs, I see three here, four here, three here, and so I need to round to three sig figs. So I will chop it here, look at the five, let that bump the five up to a six and finish with 0 0.216 moles per liter. You could have written that as 0 0.216 moles per liter like this. Make sure you're comfortable with both so that when you read a question, you recognize it. You'll notice in example two that I used the moles per liter here and in the first example I used the capital M. So that's really it with the dilution calculation. It's a one-step calculation. Um, the key is to recognize units. And rather than try to memorize or guess, you know, really focus on understanding what's happening in the dilution process. Once all of the different calculations in, in chemistry start to show up you know, in an assessment or in a problem, it's, it becomes really important that you understand why you use certain formulas um, because that way you can recognize how to solve the problem.